travel across Oregon, I am always on the lookout for teachable moments in history, those unique places and times where I can learn more about this place we call home. Hi there, Grant McComey here, your host for Travel Oregon's Grant's Getaways. It's obvious evidence not only above ground, but below the surface too. And this week, we get in touch with a real historic hotbed across a landscape that was a true hot zone of volcanic eruptions, magma flows, and birthplace of mountains. So come on along as we explore Central Oregon's lava lands in the heart of the Newberry Crater National Monument for a look back in time. It's easy to fall in love with Central Oregon's high cascades in summer. A recreation heaven on earth with snow-capped peaks, deep green forests, and inviting pockets of ponds, lakes, and grassy meadows. And yet, when you come down closer to ground at places like Lava Butte inside the Newberry National Monument near Bend, discover that so much beauty was built upon devastating natural disasters that date back 75,000 years. Trail the Molten Lands gives you a little more perspective, but then coming up to the Butte and then seeing, wow, it's not just right around the cinder cone, it actually flows and continues on. Larry Barron says there are 400 buttes or cinder cones that date to the time when volcanoes were king. More than anywhere else in the world, scattered along here, and most of them you have no access to, but here and also Pilot Butte and Bend, you can actually drive up. Lava either exploded into the air or oozed out of the ground for miles around. The one and a half mile long trail of molten land allows you a close up view. Knocked down every tree in sight and wherever it went, nothing lived. So anything you see now is things that have come after the flow, 6,000 years of growth on the flow itself. There's not much growing on this lava field. It still looks pretty barren. The Lava Land Center is Volcano Central for folks who want to learn how Oregon was shaped so many years ago. This is so unique. The high desert is not something you see every day. You got to look a little deeper, I think. To do that, travel the short trail down into the ground, into nearby Lava River Cave, where Barron's advises come prepared with light and dress for warmth. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, now we can go in. As I look into the black, uh, <laughs> we have come just a matter of, oh, I don't know, 10 yards or so from up there to down here. You can see the breath. The temperature has dropped at least 25, 30 degrees, wouldn't you say, Larry? Yes, right. Lava River Cave's entrance is nicknamed the Collapsed Corridor because the cave's air mixes with the outside air, so to expand and contract the cave's walls and ceiling. So all of these rocks that we're seeing tumbled and jumbled have come from the sides and the top? That's the right. Yeah, and uh, you, wow. can, you can sometimes even see where they came from. But he adds, rest easy, for there's no record of rock fall over the past century. Your cave adventure is perfectly safe as you reach the smooth, sandy floor. At more than one mile, Lava River Cave is Oregon's longest cave, so be sure to stop along the way and examine what at first glance looks like a sort of glazed donut effect. But what you see here, what looks like um, almost like candle wax, I guess, dripping on the side of a candle. Is it dripping off the wall there? It isn't, but it looks like when it, it is. Yeah, <laughs> and and people fine. think it is. Yeah. <laughs> people think that the water is mixing with minerals and dripping. That's not happening. This is solid basalt. It hasn't changed in 75,000 years. The gases got trapped, remelted the walls, and all the walls started dripping again after they hardened. And there's more. Contour lines extend up to the cave ceiling, some 60 feet high. So the highest point is where it started. Oh. And then as the magma chamber slowly emptied, the lava flows dropped in level. So you actually can see here's a level, here's a level, here's a level. And if you look at the lines, you're actually seeing all the different levels. It is an eerie experience, best enjoyed on a tour, which takes place each afternoon. And like all of the Lava Lands experience, teaches you much about a unique chapter in Oregon. The Lava River Cave closes at the end of October and then reopens in May. Why? Because that habitat is critical for the survival of varied bat species. So it's really important to give it a rest. A couple of things to keep in mind. Be sure that you dress appropriately. 
wear some boots, and also remember you're in a refrigerator of sorts at 42 degrees, so be sure to bring some warm clothing. And finally, make sure you have plenty of light, not just a rental lantern, but perhaps a backup flashlight. Hey, you can find all the details and the directions on the Travel Oregon website. So until next week, get out here and explore Oregon, perhaps down in the deep where you've never been before, and let Travel Oregon be your guide. For Travel Oregon, I'm Grant McComey.